Hello, fellow Mystery Files. Today I will resume my coverage of ranking all 33 novel adaptations from ITV's Poirot series starring David Suchet as Hercule Poirot. Like I said in my last video, I am only covering the novels here because I have not yet covered the short story collections, and my criteria for assessing these episodes is more or less to do with the changes that were made, as I find the production value to be pretty excellent and consistent throughout, so I don't have much to say there. Fair warning, I will be spoiling both the novels and the episodes ahead. Starting off with number 22, I have a novel that made few changes, but I think these changes weren't the best thought out, and that is Death in the Clouds. And I understand the need to condense the cast, as there are a lot of characters who are somewhat extraneous from the novel, but I feel it doesn't really do the plot any good. Jane is now a stewardess instead of a passenger, and some of the other characters don't function in their original roles. None of this dampens the story, but it wasn't really what I was hoping for. It has a different vibe than the novel. Jane in particular feels very different. We lose out on a lot of her personality we saw a lot of from her hair salon passages. I never really felt like any of the characters really popped like they do in the novel. I just find them all very flat. Death on the Clouds doesn't make any dramatic or weird changes, but I do find this adaptation just isn't as good as it could have been, so I have it here at number 22. At number 21, a very similar thing with Cat Among the Pigeons. And the novel had a lot of characters, so some had to be cut and combined with others, and this was absolutely necessary. I think the Anne Chaplin and her murder plots are very well adapted. Her romance with Adam Goodman is very strong and very believable, to the point where on my initial watch of this episode many years ago, I thought the culprit might have been changed, but it wasn't. The removal of Miss Vansittart now means that Miss Rich is attacked by Miss Chadwick, but she survives, and I didn't need this. It didn't feel like Miss Chadwick had that strong of a motive to attack Miss Rich. And I mean, to be fair, in the novel, I didn't really buy her motive for attacking Miss Vansittart either, but I just felt this was completely weaker in every way imaginable. I think Miss Springer's character is improved upon. She's even nastier and more hated than she was in the book. I'm not a fan of her murder with her now being impaled by a javelin thrown from across the dream, which really came off as cartoony. And through the episode, the whole episode off for me in terms of the mood, I felt like Jennifer Sutcliffe wasn't as good as a character for me in the adaptation. I also had a lot of problems with Poirot that I had in the novel, where it seems so out of place. I think it's slightly better here because he is incorporated into the story from the beginning, and overall his lines and whatnot are just better in fitting for him than they were in the novel. But overall, it is a mixed bag, so The Cat Among the Pigeons comes in at number 21. At number 20 is an adaptation that has many of the same problems the novel had, but I do feel as if it improved upon the original, and that is The Clocks. And the shift in the time setting I think helps because instead of having a Cold War era spy situation, we have a much more well-developed and believable pre-World War II spy shenanigans. This plot is much more well-developed and fits into the story much better. I st still could have done without it, but it is better than the Cold War one from the book. Some of the neighbors have changed, and many of them are suspects, both in the murder and in the spy plot, and I think this is done with some intrigue. It's much better. The series made a huge effort to flesh out both plots, and I think it was successful, but it is still the clock, so it's not really that great of a story overall. The murder plot of the unknown victim actually takes a bit of a backseat for some time, where the focus is largely on the spy situation, which is more urgent and just has more to do, more to work with. Character-wise, I think the Blands are improved. I love their relationship where in the end she confesses because she can't stand either her husband or Miss Martindale, who's her sister. It's a much better ending than in the novel than where it just simply sort of ends without any real fanfare. But I just can't place the clocks much higher, so it lands here at number 20. At number 19 is another widely improved from the novel, and that is Halloween Party. Again, a lot of the characters are cut from the adaptation, and some of those past murders are simplified, which is fine and necessary. There are actually some new characters in Rowena Drake's Children, and I appreciated this because it really fleshes out Rowena's character and backstory, which is significantly lacking in the novel. The overall plot is simplified and less confused, so it is a lot easier to follow and allows for more character development. The ending is much better, where Miranda nearly willingly commits suicide, is dispatched with in favor of a more traditional and credible mystery novel ending. 
Michael Garfield does not commit suicide and admits that he was just using Rowena Drake for her money. And we learned that Rowena did, in fact, kill her husband. And all of this was left ambiguous by the novel, so it's nice to receive closure on this. Overall, it's a fine adaptation, but still a little scattered, so I have it here at number 19. Now for number 18, and this is what I would really consider the base level episode, even though it is not quite the halfway point through the list, but and that is The Mysterious Affair at Styles. And this was not the first novel adaptation for the series, but it is an early one. And this episode didn't change much, to be honest, which is why I have it about right in the middle. I think everything about it is fine. Dr. Bowerstein has been cut, which I think is for the better, as I never really cared for an espionage subplot in a traditional murder mystery. I really appreciate the scene we get detailing Poirot and Hastings' meeting for the first time. It's only sort of alluded to in the text, but here we get a much more in-depth story. A lot of the problems I have with the novel are solved, mainly by simplifying certain plot points, and many of the dumb things Alfred does have been removed. I think the expansion of the John Cavendish having an affair with Mrs. Rake storyline works very well. In the novel, it seems rather unimportant and sort of an obvious red herring, but in the adaptation, it's much more dramatic and suspenseful, suspenseful and far less of an obvious red herring. I didn't place the mysterious affair at Styles any higher on the list because I do feel the overall tone of the episode is flat. It doesn't take me on a suspenseful journey with all the ups and downs that the better episodes do, so I have it here at number 8. At number 17 is, again, a sort of similar situation, and that is The Murder on the Links. Very little was changed here plot-wise. The story itself is just restructured and begins with a quite lengthy info dump detailing the Baraldi case and all of that backstory. Poirot and Hastings meet Paul Renault in person, which I appreciated. I think it creates a much more personal motive for Poirot to get involved rather than see receiving a random letter from someone he's never heard of or met before. It also cuts out Dulce Duveen, which I have mixed feelings about. While I never cared for that subplot in the novel, I do feel like it's very iconic in the life of Hastings and for the books overall, so I think she should have been in there. I understand why they didn't, because Hastings was still a recurring character at this point in the series, and they weren't going to add in a whole new character. Like The Mysterious Affair at Styles, I do feel as if this episode lacks those ups and downs and is very flat throughout, especially the beginning with the info dump, which I suppose is still better than having the same info dump in the middle of the story like the novel does. It's all a bit of a mixed bag for the murder on the links here at number 17. Starting at number 16, I think these are definitely the more superior episodes. I think of these all as being excellent, though this next one is a bit of an odd case, and that is the adaptation of evil under the sun. I find this episode absolutely delightful. I love the setup with Poirot falling ill at Hastings' new Argentine restaurant and having to suffer through a variety of health treatments while on the island, only for it to be revealed at the end that Poirot fell sick because of the bad food and not because of its health. It's so humorous, and as a result, the gardeners are cut, which is fine. We don't need their comic relief anymore. I think the ending in the adaptation is more complete than in the novel. The murder is solved and the Horace Blatt drug smuggling plot comes to an end, which it does not in the book. I like the expansion of some of the characters to make them seem like fuller people. I'm ambivalent about the changing of Linda Marshall to Lionel Marshall, played by Russell Tovey. But I found myself liking this change a lot. I think the plot just works better with Lionel than Linda, especially since all the voodoo stuff has been removed, and Lionel does not commit suicide, but is still framed, and it seems like a le less obvious frame-up than it was in the book. My one knock would be the focus on the Alice Corrigan murder. While this is mentioned in the book, the adaptation has Miss Lemon go pretty deep into this, which makes it pretty obvious this is important. But other than that, I don't have any real faults with Evil Under the Sun here at number 16. At number 15 is an adaptation that I think is very good overall, but with one or two knocks against it that don't really harm it in my opinion, and that is One Two Buckle My Shoe. In terms of production value, I think this is one of the best adaptations. It really feels like a feature film. There's action, intrigue, mystery, a little humor, a little darkness tone-wise. I think the scenes at the dentist's office are much better here. I thought this was something of a missed opportunity in the novel, so I enjoyed seeing more of Morley's office. I'm generally not a fan of opening preambles that serve basically as info dumps, but the one here provides some much needed context for the story without spoiling or making the solution incredibly obvious, so I thought this was an improvement. 
My biggest fault is the elimination of Howard Rakes, the leftist character. The novel was very balanced politically, but by removing Rakes, the leftist element is missing now, and it also hampers the other characters. Jane and Julia Oliveira are barely in it now, which is a shame, but their absences allow for other plot points to be expanded and, quite frankly, better presented than they were in the novel. And this makes for an overall very strong episode, much improved from the original story, so I have it here at number 15. In 14th place, I have an adaptation that I feel improves on the novel decently, but also I think weakens it a bit, and that is Mrs. McGinty's Dead. I think when watching this episode, I really get the sense that it was adapted brilliantly. It was both faithful and entertaining throughout, but some of the creative choices were double-edged swords. A lot of the characters were cut from the novel, and that was absolutely necessary. There were too many in the book, and many of them blended together. The number of potential murderers in town is also just reduced to two, which is fine since those other two past murder stories from the novel were barely even a factor. This makes the plot so much clearer to follow and to keep track of everyone, and this is a huge improvement. However, the other end of this, and this doesn't really happen with the other adaptations that made similar choices, is that those character roles have to go somewhere, and I think these changes are normally so smooth because it feels like the characters are playing true to themselves, but here, that's not really the case. I feel many of these characters just come across as completely different than they were in the story. In particular, Maud Williams is doing a lot of things that she didn't do in the novel because we no longer have either Deidre Henderson or Edna. I also think giving a larger role to the Birches was an interesting choice, but didn't really affect my opinion either way. One change I did like was Dr. Rendell Scandal being one who now he uh, allegedly administers euthanasia drugs to his patients, and this is supposed to be kept hush-hush. I think this scandal is far more credible than the one in the novel, which is sort of vague and not really given much thought. I do have some criticisms of this adaptation, but I think it's very strong overall, and my critiques don't really sully my opinion on it, so I have Mrs. McGinty's Dead here at number 14. At number 13 is an adaptation that I really enjoy, despite a few larger changes, and that is Lord Edgware Dies. And I think this episode is fantastic. The series kept the main storyline and themes and executed them brilliantly. The changing of several characters' personalities, however, I'm not the biggest fan of. Jane Wilkinson isn't this openly brazing and daring femme fatale, at least not until the big reveal. And the Duke of Merton isn't this cold personality anymore. I don't think those character changes harm the episode in any way. It's just not what I would have wanted from them, as I think they work better the way Christie wrote them. But this is more of a preference difference rather than me thinking these changes were bad or harmed the episode in any way. Not much change in terms of the plot, which again, I think is the most important thing when adapting a Christie. I don't care for this ridiculous car chase scene involving the butler. That was pretty much par for the course in these early adaptations, especially with the short stories. But I think this is a great episode despite the slight character changes, so I have it here at number 13. Now at number 12, the final adaptation I'm covering in this video is a big one, and that is Death on the Nile. Now, generally speaking, I'm more lenient with these major novels because they've been adapted a million times already, so larger changes are probably necessary. There is no point in repeating an adaptation that has been done a few times already. As is always the case with Death on the Nile, a number of characters had to be cut, and I think the right characters were cut and condensed, like Mr. Fanthorpe, Nurse Bowers, and Ricchetti all of whom are removed and their roles distributed elsewhere, and this makes a much more streamlined plot. This adaptation does all of the things I love about the book, and that's all I can really ask for from the series. I do have some issues, however. For starters, Emily Blunt's accent as Lynette Doyle is just absolutely ear-bleeding. It's so distracting and phony, I can't even stand it. But the larger issue is the romantic subplot involving Rosalie Otterborn and Tim Allerton, I actually think them not getting together is a nice change, as we typically always see the couple get together at the end of a mystery story, but it's treated very strangely here, where Tim is either in love with his mother, or mother figure, or perhaps he's gay, and either way, this is treated for laughs, and just comes across as a little silly, and it really jars with the tone of the rest of the episode. It leaves this episode ending on a strange note that I think could have been avoided, but otherwise this is a fantastic adaptation and I love it, so I put Death in the Nile here at number 12. 
And that concludes this video. Next week, I finish up on my ranking of every Poirot novel adaptation starring David Suchet with the top 11. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. And until next time, Mystery Files.